thought I remember it. And I know it was laminated, old school laminated. All right, this is the 500 subscriber special. Um, I knew this was coming. I didn't know it was going to come today. Um, kind of going off the cuff. Um, first, I'm going to address the fact that I've got one video really taken off. I've got a number of other types of videos that are being suggested much more frequently than previously. Um, in short, this channel has been in existence for like eight years now. And up until, I don't know, a year or two ago, I was below a hundred subscribers. Um, Partly the reason why it stayed so low, even though I was producing content frequently, was that at the start it was more of an archive of video, either for things that I wanted to keep that I didn't want to have on my phone. So if you go back to my oldest videos, there's some of the former stepkids' uh, school performances and such. Uh, but also the content where uh, I would pick apart uh, some of the online shenanigans and my own personal history with, you know, being online with everything else is that in 2021 in May, I deleted my Facebook account. I have no other social media. The only thing that I do online as far as a presence or uploading content is this YouTube. Um, Aside from things that I was uploading for use on Facebook, um, you know, over time, I went from camera facing out to camera facing me for the longest time, several years. Uh, my face was never on. Uh, we never saw me, never had anything on screen. Didn't do a big face reveal or anything. Just at one point started doing camera facing. Um, some of those picked up a little bit more momentum than others. And by that, I mean where I was typically getting zero views or one view other than my own review view, because I typically watch my own videos at least once after I upload to make sure everything's good. Um, the... As opposed to getting like, you know, the one or two, I would occasionally have videos get like 10 or 20, sometimes 10. It took me a really, really long time, probably about three, four years ago, the first time I had a video or more than one video consistently get, you know, 10 views over time. <clears throat> now, I've also had a number of community guideline warnings. I've had a number of videos that they've deleted really without any appeal process being available, etc. And I associated through comments and chats, chat rooms on live streams, etc. Uh, with people that may not be, you know, popular with the platform either. Um, personally, I've always been an advocate of free speech. And skeptical of the government, to say the least. Uh, the thing that I think confused the uh, checklist system I think they used to use, if there was people that would flag things and whatever, that I had people that I knew personally around here where I live that are brain rotted by the online lifestyle, the propaganda, and decided that because they disagreed with me about something that was not a local matter, that they would try and mess with my channel. But ultimately, what ended up happening was um, my visibility was almost completely reduced. I think there were one or two people that knew me personally that got notifications set up and even then still didn't always get notifications. I've had a couple of people locally that um, subscribe to the channel that end up losing their channel because their own opinions are something. And I'm not saying it's justified to delete someone's account because 
they say something that you consider wrong. But for whatever reason, a number of these people I think have had to, to remake some accounts from time to time, which, you know, it's just kind of how it goes these days. Um, but anyways, I spent an extremely, extremely prolonged amount of time, a long time, shadow banned on this platform. And now it seems like that's been kind of lifted. Um, they've gone through numerous times. Every time they've had an adpocalypse, I've gotten a notification about something that I uploaded that uh, had something to do with, you know, either me, honestly, like they mistook me in one case for advocating QAnon when in fact I was mocking QAnon. Um, when it comes to that kind of thing, uh, I don't, I don't want to get into detail. I don't want to end up damaging whatever's been repaired on uh, my, you know, channel's visibility here, but uh, I, I fell into that particular one for a while, but the problem is I personally am on spectrum at what used to be referred to as logic boy. What that means is that I think like a Vulcan, basically the easiest way to put it. Um, I'm not confined to logic, but things that are not logical irritate the hell out of me. Um, and it's not just the things that I think make sense or that I want to make sense. It's about basic cause and effect, consistency, real logic. And I've always been a critical thinker. So what happened was I started asking critical thinking questions as I had been doing since 2003 when I started being a truther. Since 2003, I've been asking things like cui bono, follow the money, who benefits? Where does, where does this originate from? What, what else happened while we were distracted with this? I've had, and more, mind you, all of these things have become second nature to me to question. And I started questioning. And what happened was the limited hangout was exposed. The people who were not just regular folks that had been drawn into this as well, but people who were already there waiting for people to show up started saying, hey, no, this is where we're going, though. Stick with the group. And I watched a group think form. I stood there going like this in virtual space watching a group think form where everyone just stayed with whatever idea and nope, doesn't matter. Even if they were saying... You need to be a critical thinker. You need to do your own research. You remember that one? Do your own research. But when I did do my own research and then I had questions, they told me to shut up. So I started mocking that. I fell out of it. Part of it was also that I had, while I was, shall we say, deluded by their storyline, had realized that I had been through something very similar before many years back and that it was almost as if I had trained for exactly this kind of a situation. And I was just about to get ready to be a freaking warrior for truth or whatever on the keyboard when something clicked inside that said, no, remember what happened the last time. What happened the last time was on various circa 28 to 2012 um, ascension themed internet forums and things to do with indigo children and things to do with uh, new age spirituality before Facebook was anything but college alumni only, which was at this time and other smaller weblog sites were you know, becoming popular. MySpace was just being a thing, just starting. And in fact, at the point at which you could actually begin to upload your band's music onto MySpace was about this time, 2008, 2009, maybe, maybe 07. But within this time frame, I had been engaged in dialogue, discussion, and speculation, as well as some interesting LARPing and, and it literally RP, role play. Not, I, mean, I don't know what was going on there sometimes. But there was a lot of weird stuff, a lot of different things mingling. 
And for those who are seeking transcendence or a higher perspective or whatever, this is a way to do so. This is a place where you can gain some serious insight from some very interesting people. And one of the reasons <clears throat> why I feel like the internet is such a great thing inherently as a concept is the way that it connects people. And that was the thing was that, you know, back in 03, I had been on um, Zanga web logging since about 01, a little before that. And by 2005, I had realized that Online connectivity inherently gives you the potential to reach a very large number of people in ways that had never been possible before. And we all nowadays, it's been 20 years, right? We now talk about how like, you know, well, that was pre-internet. They didn't have the rapid information and the ability to send messages and video and images. You know, I mean, the, the fucking future is now, right? Well, back then, the future was just becoming now. And I had no idea that nefarious, uh, ill-intentioned individuals within positions of power and, you know, up the pyramid, as it were, had also figured this out. So... By the period of 07 to 09 and into 10, the internet forums became limited hangouts where people that were considered, analytically speaking, gullible were manipulated. This, of course, like I said, pre-Facebook, Facebook existed, but it was at that time only for college alumni. The faces in the book were your student ID photo. And if you didn't have one, you couldn't get a Facebook. storm. So basically what I'm getting at is I had seen and experienced a psychological warfare operation on civilians to convince them that they needed to vote for X candidate because X candidate had made promises according to the limited hangout people, not according to anything that I can find that is really real. Maybe an offhand comment somewhere, but I don't know how real the concept of Obama closing Guantanamo Bay was ever really a thing. Maybe he did say it. Maybe he never did it. I mean, I know he never did it. But the other thing was that the only way for the masterminds and enablers of the September 11th, 2001 attacks, the only way that the people who were involved with that, that were working for our government at the time or adjacent at the time, that those people would only be brought to justice if a certain candidate was elected. And the promises of apprehending and prosecuting 9-11 insiders in the government, people who knew, specifically the previous president and vice president, as well as all the war crimes that happened in Iraq and Afghanistan, that they would have to stand some kind of trial for this. The only way that that would happen would be that you vote for the one guy. And once the one guy got in, the limited hangout people deleted their accounts. Now, this was also, interestingly, 
something where the first president or presidential candidate to have a Twitter was involved. And there were mysterious, capitalized first letters of words that sometimes could be arranged either through anagrams or just sequentially into words. And these words were used as proof that these promises were going to be upheld. And then ultimately, again, like I said, said candidate gets into office, limited hangouts, delete their accounts. The PSYOP basically picks up and vanishes. And everybody else that was manipulated by it into sharing information, promising things to other people, that these things would come come to fruition, etc. Basically taking everybody in the truth community and in the new wave spirituality community, making them look like idiots and liars. Left holding an empty bag. That was what my, my memory was telling me I needed to remember. Remember what happened the last time. You look stupid. None of the things they promised happened. Beware. And so I started warning people about it. But my sense of humor oftentimes is very dry. My sarcasm can be extremely subtle. I can be ironic. I can be acrimonious. I can be many things. And over the years, a lot of the stuff that I have put onto videos, either talking about things that I've actually looked into and not just went to some video and took what somebody else said for granted. Like when it came to that shutdowns and everything back in 2020, the reason I have a hard time finding work, the part of the reason why I'm so shadow banned is that I can read peer reviewed studies and I can look through more than just the abstract and the conclusion I'm a college dropout, but I've still been to college. And so it's been over the years. Somewhat seemingly coinciding with the decease of the former chairperson of this company, of this platform, was about the time that that one video just kind of took off. Now, it was also uploaded at the same time, so maybe that was just the first one. And there had been glimmers of traction. I've got a number of videos that have been, you know, 30 to 40 to 50 views prior to that, like two and a half weeks ago or whatever, that this began. So that's my idea, my theory or speculation on why my channel is now suddenly gaining traction. I haven't changed a thing. I've recently switched to um, super compressing forward facing videos for ease of upload. And I think this one I'm actually going to experiment with to um, shrink it down and then stretch it back out and see if it takes up that much more space because it's just a lot more of the same pixels. And then we're going to see what 1080p version of 240p is going to look like. So I'm going to be done with this one. I have another one to make because this weather was a story. I must tell it. I've uploaded a whole bunch of videos and I will talk about those videos on the next one. <clears throat> if you're one of my new subscribers, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, the topic and content of the particular video that seems to have drawn the most recent subscribers, uh, is not something I do all the time. And certainly real life examples from my own life are not something I typically use. There was a point being made and YouTube just happened to decide that that was the video they were going to shoot to the moon or at least, you know, 30,000 feet. So anyways, if you're new here, I appreciate it. Thank you. If you've been here, I appreciate it. Thank you. Feel free to like the video. If you'd like to share it, do so to anybody you think might be interested. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to this channel.
Uh, I don't upload constantly, but I do in spurts. The type of content I usually do involves nature walks, auto repair, um, the sky being amazing, and also some forward or some uh, selfie cam facing videos, um, typically of topical content. Um, I have uh, kind of, I don't know, taught myself how to not just rant and upload it and rant and upload it. Oftentimes these videos are not a multiple take situation, but this may be the fourth day that I've attempted to make a video before finally feeling satisfied that this is something worth uploading. Um, beyond that, I mean, if you're still plugged into the culture and the society in the ways that I am mostly not, you can feel free to draw whatever conclusions you wish to draw about me, my ideology, whatever. I'm not really super getting into it at this point. Uh, I don't subscribe to any particular organized religion or mainstream viewpoint in any concerted way. Uh, I build my viewpoint based on that which is real, that which passes the test of logic and critical thinking. And I don't claim it to be the ultimate truth or anything like that. It's just the way that I guide myself. And if you would like that insight, I will gladly share it. Because the only way the world gets better, I think, is if people are continuously working on improving themselves, being excellent to everybody around them, and... A lot of that involves some level of enlightenment or enrichment of the mind. Uh, so insight is always good. So that's what I got for this one. Thank you very much. Again, if you're still here. Um, if you're still watching all the way to the end of the video, I would ask that you please leave a comment for the algorithm. You can comment anything you like, or if you can't think of anything to comment, you can say like Spock rocks or something. All right. Thank you.